He intended to kill, and according to his actions and home videos, he had no intentions to stop. His intent was to massacre the students at Freeman High School. I can still see students running to their parents and leaping in their arms like toddlers, rocking and crying. Our beautiful campus became a crime scene, complete with yellow tape and lots of law enforcement. Powerful messages and stories from those impacted by the Freeman High School shooting. It has been more than four years since the Freeman community was changed forever. Today, the victims and survivors shared their stories in court for the very first time. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crampton News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Tom is off this week. We have team coverage this evening to share the stories told in court today. So we begin right now with Kyle Simchuk, who was in court today. And Kyle, what can you tell us just about this first day of those victim impact statements? Well, yeah, Mark and Whitney, like you said, this is the first time since the shooting these victims have been able to speak directly to Caleb Sharp and the judge sentencing him, the terror they experienced back then and still to this day. Prosecutors say roughly 150 victims plan to speak in court or have asked for their testimony to be read. Today we heard from students, teachers, grandparents, and school counselors who say they're still haunted by the shooting and suffer from PTSD and anxiety. Teachers and students talked about hiding in dark classrooms, not knowing if they would make it out alive. Their statements were read in court by victim advocates. There were very few discussions over the shooting except how dark, quiet, and still the school became momentarily. These students feared for their lives, hiding, hoping Caleb Sharp would not find them. It is the most surreal and haunting feeling in the world to know that death is down the hall and coming. I was convinced that we were going to die. Okay, Mr. Pace, thank And you. later on in the afternoon, we heard testimony from the school's janitor. He actually disarmed Sharp and pinned him to the ground before deputies arrived. We'll bring you his dramatic story tonight at 5. So again, about 150 people uh, signed up to either speak or have their testimony heard. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take uh, likely about two weeks before uh, Sharp is even sentenced. They want to have all those victims give him the chance to speak. Kyle, I'm okay. curious about Sharp specifically. He was in court today. What was his reaction as these victim yeah. impact statements were being read? It's kind of hard to tell what he was thinking, what's going on in his mind. We just saw him. He was basically just staring at the table um, in front of him. A few people did jump on Zoom to give their testimony. Um, he did look over at the at the wall or the TV on the wall over there, mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of the time just staring, staring down at the table. Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of that on that video. Um, Kyle, w before you go, we are hearing also a lot. Several of these statements have also touched about the sentence for this shooter. A lot of people pretty much unilaterally asking for a longer sentence for him. Absolutely. There was a state law that was changed uh, a few years ago since he was a juvenile at the time. He could get a life sentence, but there has to be the possibility of parole. So a lot of people, basically everyone we heard uh, speak today, were asking uh, for a life sentence. They, they don't want to see him out. Interesting. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. Well, among the dozens of statements read in court today was that of the wife of Freeman School Superintendent Randy Russell. And this is the first time we have heard just how the shooting impacted him personally. Now, as Crem 2's Amanda Rowley reports tonight, his wife's words revealed the emotional and the mental toll that shooting had on Russell as well as his family. How do we help the kids? That's been the focus for Freeman School Superintendent Randy Russell for nearly five years. Since the shooting at Freeman High School, Russell kept a strong face. But in court today, through the words of his wife, Shauna, we learned just how traumatizing that September day was for Russell and his family. In a statement, Shauna told the judge on that tragic day, it looked like the life had drained out of Russell, but he was holding it together for staff, students, and the Freeman community. She tried to make sure Russell got rest, but over time, she said he struggled with panic attacks. There were times when he would drive halfway to work, turn around and come home. I would calm him down and do my best to keep him from having a full blown panic attack. This became a norm for a while. One day his panic attack was so bad I had to take him to urgent care because he thought he was having a heart attack. There was nothing I could do to get him to calm down. Seeing him breaking down has been one of the hardest things for me through all of this. She explained that Russell did not want his children to see him this way, so she did her best to shield them, but it became increasingly difficult as time went on. Over time, she says nightmares and sleepless nights set in. Shauna told the judge she hopes her family and the Freeman community can find closure when the shooter is finally sentenced. 
Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Well, we will check in with Amanda at 430 tonight. She'll join us over Zoom to tell us more about how the day unfolded in court today. In the meantime, we want to turn our attention to the weather outside. Thomas Patrick standing by right now in the Outdoor Weather Center. A lot of freezing fog across the region today, and in many places it was actually very slippery, Thomas. Yeah, some of us may have noticed as we stepped outside that there were some slippery sidewalks and driveways, and that's really because we never got above freezing today thanks to the fog and the low cloud cover. It's still 29 degrees outside, certainly a little bit chillier than uh, if we would have had any kind of sunshine and those temperatures being as cold as they are right now are going to lead to a very cold night. These are the temperatures expected tomorrow morning with a low of about 22 in Spokane, 20 in Coeur d'Alene. There could be some teens between Moses Lake and Deer Park up towards Republic, Colville, Kettle Falls as well. And some of you may have even seen a few flurries to go along with that low cloud, low hanging cloud cover. Most of that activity is finished up for tonight. Obviously Doppler radar kind of missing out on some of that fog, which will once again re settle in in the overnight hours and about seven o'clock tomorrow morning. I think there will be some spots of some dense freezing fog, especially around that I 90 corridor. So we're going to be tracking this not just for tonight, but most of this week. We'll show you how many more days we'll see the fog and when this stagnant weather pattern is going to finally break all in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you very much. We are following some breaking news out of Northeast Spokane tonight. That's where police shot and killed a man just a few blocks from Chief Gary Park. Police say that man was holding a baby at knife point. Our own Ian Smay is live at that scene tonight. So Ian, first of all, how is the baby doing tonight? Yeah, Whitney, fortunately, Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel said that baby is okay and unharmed. He also said police first received calls from a woman crying at about 1245 this afternoon. She told police she thought her baby was dead, and this all happened just about a block away from the Stone Street Park where we are standing right now. In fact, as you can see, the caution tape is visible from the park where we are standing. That is how close it was to this park. The police chief described the scene as chaotic when officers arrived as multiple cars were moving around the area. He said when they approached the house, officers say the man was holding a baby at knife point. It was several minutes after officers arrived when shots were fired. Um, they addressed this individual um, and within several minutes after that initial contact where they saw this, the subject holding a knife to an infant, shots were fired. Um, at this point in time, uh, we believe two officers fired their weapons. That man was taken to the hospital and has died from his injuries. We're told the baby was not injured, and at this point, it's still unclear how the man was related to the woman and the child, but Meidel did say police have received information that this could possibly be a domestic violence situation. At this time, there are still multiple roads closed off in the area, including this met at Stone going over to the crime scene, so try to avoid this area on your commute home if you can. And since the uh, shots were fired by Spokane police officers, the investigation is being handled by the Spokane County Sheriff's Office and the Washington State Patrol reporting in the Chief Gary Park neighborhood. Ian Smay, Crem 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. Still ahead tonight, could this latest wave of Omicron be coming to an end soon? New data suggests that it is, but not for everybody. We're back after a quick break.